Hey, everybody. It's uh, Coach Jay, your big brand off-body coach. Uh, I'll, I'll explain that to you guys later. <laughs> uh, we're here this week to talk about Boxing Ontario's uh, election for the Board of Directors. And uh, I've got with me uh, Lee Smith and Abdul Judah, who are both going for going for the position on, uh, on the board. Uh, let me quickly go through who everybody who's running here. So we've got Abdul Judah, CJ Hackett, who was supposed to be, but I guess he couldn't make it. Kyle Millett, who has sent us a, a fantastic statement. Nick Chronopoulos, Noel Club, Rod Power, Shane Strickland, Todd Nadal, Vince McDonald, and, uh, and Lee. All right. Let's get right to it here. Let's... So the first thing I just just want to quickly talk about here is why we why did I decide I wanted to do this? I should have done it earlier, but now I I wish I'd thought about doing it earlier. But it it's not as big an issue for coaches and for clubs who are in the boxing mecca. If you guys are all in Toronto, all the coaches know each other. Uh, I was very active down there, so I have a good relationship. I know I know both of you. I know most of the guys who are coming for the board, <laughs> but a lot of guys that are in the outskirts like me don't especially now that there's new clubs in uh, in Gatineau and just across the border. We fight in Quebec more often than we fight here. So this is to let the small clubs know what you guys are about, who you guys are, and what you're going to do that's going to affect us. In Toronto, now, of course, it's important for them too, but they know you guys. So when, you, when Abdul, you say you're running, everybody knows you down there, and they're going to go, well, they know what you're, what you're about. So they're, they're going to have a very easy decision. Lee, it'll be the same thing for you. But when you're dealing with people on the outskirts, I assume it's the same for the guys down in Windsor and places like that. Uh, it's going to be a lot of who are these guys, who are we voting for? I'm just going to call my buddy so-and-so and see what he says. So uh, right off the bat here, right off the bat, I'm just going to, if you guys don't mind, I'm going to read Kyle's statement since he was kind enough to, to write me quite a good one here. And you'll have to forgive me here. I'm getting old, so it's hard to read this stuff. So he says, my name is Kyle Millette. Most of you know me likely from my time coaching. I've been involved in boxing Ontario in, in a number of different ways. I've been an athlete, a coach. I got my feet wet with officiating, and I served on Boxing Ontario's High Performance Committee for two consecutive years. I was given the opportunity to teach uh, Team Ontario at the 2023 Quebec Open Tournament. Currently owns Bushido Boxing in London, where he's able to fulfill his passion for coaching and sharing the sport of boxing, which we all love. He's decided to run for the position as the board of director uh, on the board of directors with Boxing Ontario. If I'm elected, I would say that I would handle this position much the same as I have throughout my coaching career. If you know me, you know that my motives are clear and I'm driven by an athlete first approach. I value my integrity and making sure to do the right thing all of the time. I can guarantee there would be no self-serving decisions and I would operate not only with transparency, but with the best intentions of the membership first and foremost. I have no problem uh, asking the hard questions or ruffling feathers and going to bat for members as I always have for my athletes. I work to tirelessly make sure all of our time and resources go towards building and growing our athletes, our coaches, clubs, and members. I believe we do this by creating and searching for opportunities and experiences, uh, experiences for us all to continue to level up. The board's done a great job with things like creating the Female Development Committee, bringing back the Novice Tournament, and hosting Team Ontario camps. It's a tremendous start that we can continue to build off of. Things like dual matches, bringing teams in from other countries, planning trips for our HP team, high performance team, and creating more camps, programs, and initiatives for our athletes, coaches, and officials and members to be a part of and gain more experience. We all need to work together, listen, and lean on our experience membership to make gains for Boxing Ontario. Ultimately, I know our membership will make the, great, uh, the, the best decision. We're lucky to have a great group of candidates, and I look forward to what's, uh, to what's to come for Boxing Ontario and Boxing Canada. No matter what and no matter who you decide to vote for, please make sure to make your voices heard and make your vote. Let's take things into our own hands and continue to make progress together as a whole. Good luck to all the candidates. So that's from Kyle Millett. And I know Kyle as well. He seems, he's, a pretty cool, he's a pretty cool dude. Uh, did you guys have anything you wanted to say to right off the bat or do you want to get some questions? 
I've got a bunch of questions from uh, from the membership. Uh, for me, it's just thank you for uh, doing this. This is great, and this is I would love to hear what the membership has to ask us and want to know. How about you, Adol? Yeah. Um, no, same here. I, I appreciate you uh, for inviting us down here. Um, <clears throat> regardless of last minute, I think I think this is something that we should be doing every single time we have an election. Um, just like, you know, <laughs> we're following the the political parties in the USA, you know, we got we got a lot of stuff um, in the media and we, we should have something like this for at least for the boxing community right. just to stay up to date. And, you know, words on a screen read are way different than, you know, meeting somebody in person or even a call like this. Right. Yeah. I tell you what, I'll, I'll make this promise to you yeah. is that for every election going forward, I will do this and I'll do it earlier so that everybody can be or we can get max participation. Love it. Love it. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Great job. All right. So the very first question, uh, and it's one that I share as well is plans for youth boxing and development. Who wants to start? You want to go, Lee? I'm sorry. What did you say? <clears throat> plans for youth boxing and development. Okay. What are our plans? Right. Uh, for me, I would be looking more at uh, doing invitationals, doing the camps, uh, also getting the, that training in and, and kind of Almost, I wouldn't say scouting, but seeing who our top five is in each weight category, uh, get that training in. Also, inviting them to participate in out-of-province um, uh, events to develop them. You know, we have a, we're neighbors next door, USA. There's lots of tournaments 24/7, and I'm sure if we got a group together and go down they'll get that experience and grow from there. So, and we can do always that networking of interchanging and having that ability to have those events here as well so that we can grow our youth uh, boxing and, and, you know, getting them uh, the word out there and getting them really in, in, interested in developing their skills for the next set. You know, that way we have, we build strong youth division. For sure. How about you there, Abdul? Do you have anything to add to that? Um, yeah, what what Lee said was amazing. Yes, um, you know, uh, when you look at our future, for at least for Canada, it always ha our focus should always be like majority the youth, because you know a lot of our guys now, for example, I can name off, you know, a bunch of guys that have just gone pro, right? Mm -hmm. And they were, and but they were the ones that were youth ten years ago. And, you know, they're the ones that compete at nationals most of the time. So our future champs always relies always on the youth. Um, personally, for me, uh, what I think we should be focusing on for youth, yes, advancing them and focusing on the ones that we currently have. But I'm seeing such an audience of kids that are into so much sports. Um, I would love to see a shift in Boxing Ontario's um, marketing and, you know, who are they bringing in um, just to kind of, you know, you know, I don't want to mention Jake Paul or things like that, but there's so much social influencers that can be bringing kids into the sport. And how can Boxing Ontario, as an organization, be, you know, focusing and, you know, um, working with programs to bring more kids into the sport? Because uh, as much as I want to say this, I'll be honest, when, when I organize that, uh, the reason why I'm in a parking lot in this car, by the way, is to celebrate the novice tournament. With my team oh, right. as we did it. I'm at Palisade with them right now. I'm just in the car <laughs> oh, to celebrate with them. But um, one thing I noticed is that there wasn't that many kids. A lot of the kids would have one fight or two fights. And they're such a great talent. We have so much talent in the sport. Um, not even just from kids, but into, from coaches. I would love to see more um, kids in these, uh, in these brackets. And the way to do that is to actually just promote to kids that don't even box to bring them into the, uh, the sport. Because if you can get like four, five-year-old kids um, in that age group and just kind of, uh, you know, teach them and um, then you can truly get champs. So with what Lee said, when the, you know, our neighbors, you know, I'm, I, just, I was just in super bad boxing and I can tell you the amount of fighters that I've seen at four years old, yes. they are looking like national champs no right kidding. now. Yes. And there, I'll be honest, like, you know, I, you know, we mentioned sparring. 
it's 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 a fight. You know, when you're going down there, and these kids are four years old, strapped, yep. and they didn't wake up and just randomly walk into the gym. They were they were surrounded by their environment and and they were marketed boxing. And I know we're in Canada and we're in Ontario, and that's not the the main sport. But I would love to see why not. And you know, um, especially when we mention youth, I would, you know, when we mention youth, are we thinking twelve years old or are we thinking five years old, right? I think um, five. Same here, you know, and 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 I want to focus on that age group, that we can bring more kids. Make hey guys, come check out boxing. So when we held when we held this tournament in August, there are so many parents that brought their kids, and that was what I was kind of trying to target is to 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 bring more kids of that age group right. to show them that boxing is a sport that not just Jake Paul or Mayweather or Canelo can do, but you guys can join. So um, what what I would say is uh, my focus would be on youth. It'd be Figure out marketing or marketing or inviting certain groups or certain even sports to bring them into a boxing gym, a local boxing gym, whether it wherever it may be, working with the city to to offer up, you know, a program. Um, right now in my gym, what I'm doing is I'm working with a couple of public schools just to, as a as a um, as a as a phys ed course, even so it counts for some of their credits right. to come to yeah. my gym and just yeah. train boxing. And the teacher will be there to oversee. I'll, I'll make them a whole criteria of what we're going to be teaching. But why isn't that in front of their, in front of them, right? It's a cheap alternative to, to play sports. Uh, you don't need to buy a hockey stick or nothing. We'll provide the gloves for you and boom. So having Boxing Ontario either work with Thames Valley or working with some school boards, either Catholic school boards, to offer something from that age group right away to put it in front of these kids' faces that, hey, I can box too. And um, yeah, and then from the development, obviously... To backbone what he was saying, exactly camps, you know, um, training camps for these kids to uh, send and them all over. Yeah, we, we so that definitely... was going to be my point to to kind of bring to you guys is, I was shocked. I'm in, I'm in no different uh, position than any other boxing club. When I look around, they're young kids. The competition team maybe only has two or three of them, and I'm not alone. And they're starting at like nine and 10 and 12 and 13, as opposed to, then I went down to Michigan with Sid. Yep. And I got the number of one of the guys down there that was coaching against, uh, against my son down there. And I'm looking at his Instagram and my mind was blown. I couldn't believe this guy has like 30 kids that are like six years old and they're all, yep. so I mean, these kids are getting the training that are, 14 and 15 year olds are at five and six. No wonder they're murdering us. <laughs> no, it, it, it is very popular down there. Cause I've seen kids at six years old down there, even the females, uh, you know, and that's the other thing, just like Abdul was saying, we're trying both of us, him with the novice, me with the woman's rain events is trying to get, the word out any way possible to get the younger uh, generation in to participate. You know, I even had a few of them from the Muay Thai. They switched to boxing because they were watching it, you know, uh, mm -hmm. some from soccer, some from football, flag football, all that stuff. So the networking, the advertising, the cross training even is, is another aspect to kind of inject um, athletes to come and join us is another way, even the school board. We used to do that many years ago. We used to work with the school boards as an after school program that stopped. You know, that was a segue for us to get the, the, the boxers in, to get the numbers going. So that's something that we have to look at again and, and really start really looking at our, our younger generation and start elevating them, training them more and getting them more interested in wanting to be a part of boxing and then stay with boxing. As and I'd love to see exactly what you did with the female development committee. You guys had female, I'm so sorry, female development uh, weekends four or five times a year. Yeah. If we could have that for kids, what an amazing opportunity that would be. Yeah. We, so we, we, we wanted to advertise. We yeah. wanted to let you know what we were all about because you know, at that point in time, the, the team, and they were wonderful. You know, um, we wanted to educate, 
and let them know that they're, I mean, I had a, a young girl that was 12 years old who didn't know that there was boxing for women. And when she saw us all, she, her eyes just kind of blew up. And then her grandmother, her little brother, her mom were like, okay, she wants to box. Let's support her. And every single sparring event we had for the female development, she was there. And then she had her first fight. And oh my God, the whole family came out. And it was one of the biggest celebrations. And I teared up because for me, that's an accomplishment, you know, more than anything yeah. else to have that ability for somebody to get that, you know, was all I ever wanted to, for them to see, but she stayed with it, you know? And, and I do and, think that that's probably the biggest, the biggest issue uh, facing Boxing Ontario and Boxing Canada, to be honest, is some way to bring forward younger athletes. Right. Yeah. Because right now they're not even, they're not even allowed to spar until they're eight years old. Right. So move on to the next one here. High performance development. So this is actually coming from Gord Apolloni. He didn't ask the question, but I extrapolated this from something he posted in the, in the coaching group that I thought was actually a, a very, very good point. Cause I've seen this as well at high performance, uh, uh, camps where they're treated very much like sparring sessions and he, Gord's right. They're not sparring sessions. They should be teaching sessions and we shouldn't be pigeonholing people into a specific style that we think works. It should be whatever it would dance with the girl that brung you. You know what I mean? Uh, what do you think there, Abdul? What do you, what's your, what would be your plan for the high performance athletes? Um, it's crazy that actually Gord brought this up in that group. Um, just because currently I am on the high performance development team. And, That's why I asked you first. <laughs> and uh, and um, Ray Napper, who's the head of that team. Yep. Uh, shout out to Ray. Uh, that's my. That's my. He's a great guy. Um, and uh, the others on the team shout you guys out as well. Uh, we're doing our best. Um, and what I can say is this: last two months ago, we had the opportunity of choosing members uh, from coaches um, and boxers, and to send one out to send them out to the uh, Quebec training. Uh, to the training, yep. to the high performance training, to train with you know Team Canada and and uh, and do the fitness training and all that. And there were some boxers that we noticed that you know what we don't, we haven't seen them box in a long time, we haven't seen them do this and that. And I'm just like, and this is when it hit me. I'm like, guys, why aren't we doing like a camp? I'm like, I know a great gym, it's centralized. So you know, uh, the guys from Windsor, who's also on or Emmitsburg, sorry, who's who are also on the board, uh, so the committee. So they can even still meet, kind of meet halfway between south and north. No, not to call out Pembroke. I know you guys are all the way up there in, <laughs> in Sudbury too. But um, for our area, I just mentioned, you know, we could even have it at SidFit. Like it was a great facility. I, I didn't bring it up to, uh, to to Sid, but in my head, I know I know that he would be down for it. But It seems like um, the kind of thing he'd like. It's, mm -hmm. it's up his alley. He does the, the female development. And I've and I seen the new gym. I don't know if he has been to his gym. It's beautiful. I've not they been to his new place, no. Definitely check it out. It's a beautiful gym, um, a new facility. They've upgraded it. It's really nice. And I suggested to the committee, I was like, hey, we can organize something like this where it's not just competitive sparring and may maybe a little bit of it just to showcase, um, you know, the talents that we have. Because uh, it's it's hard to pick somebody that you don't see in sparring because some people can look good really in sparring right. and then it doesn't showcase yet in a fight. And, and then do you want me to select them when I haven't seen them? you know, either or. So to the guys that were going to be selected or they're, they're putting their names in to be, to be called to go there. Um, it'd be nice to have that once a month, you know, once a month, Hey oh, guys, at the end, really? middle of the month, let's meet there for those that come, these opportunities are, we're going to call your name, whether you're performing well or you're, you know, you're on the way, we're going to keep our eyes on you as the high performance camp or other coaches. Um, and that was my suggestion to the team and they, they absolutely loved the idea. Um, obviously I was working, working on the, uh, the August tournament. So it wasn't, it was hard to manage both at the same time. But, um, I, I think that what Gord is saying is right. What we have in boxing Ontario, what I, I know there's a lot of negatives to focus on, but if we focus a little bit on the positives of the people that we have in boxing Ontario, like DeWitt Fraser, like Olympian, his kids in Olympian, yeah, absolutely. we have, you know, the guys in Windsor, you know, we have guys that are that fought Terrence Crawford, that, that mm -hmm. did this. 
that, you know, we have a lot of people in Boxing Ontario that have so much experience. Why aren't, why aren't they having their own OG committee of their own of, <laughs> hey, guys, come down to the high performance camp this month and give some advice. Have a criteria of stuff that you look for to teach new coaches and new fighters. And I think that is absolutely something that we should be doing once a month. Because I know this is something that Detroit is doing. I'm tapped into Detroit now. I have a lot of gyms and connects down there. I get a lot of invites to go down for fights and tournaments, not just in Detroit, in Mexico, and all over. Um, so it would be, and I, I know the fact that I know that for a fact that they're doing this, where they're literally just all coming together and they're working together. So boxing on can do the exact same thing, whether it's once a month or once every other month. Right. It would be absolutely, you know, um, a killer for us to do this. You're There's no reason, correct. no sense for us not to be doing this. Where uh, right now, what I'm seeing with boxing under is us versus us mentality yeah. Yeah. in some in some gyms. Yeah. And you know, maybe a couple of gyms are working together, which is amazing. But we will not be able to push far and compete with these other gyms or other other provinces or other countries with this mindset. Well, I got to so, tell you, I like that idea because if I could trap Sid and. You know, I, I do with uh, Frazier, Frazier and, and Peter. Uh, Ford, uh, Peter, I don't yeah. even know why I wasn't saying him. Yeah. <laughs> if I could trap all those guys in the room for yeah. a weekend and pick their brains, that would be a dream for me. Yeah. So having something like that is a, so you know what? I'm going to skip a couple of, I'm going to skip a, I'm going to move one question up. So the next one was about coaching development. Uh, but because you kind of touched on it, I'd like to, I'd like to hear what you guys have to say about, uh, a new and better mentoring system for especially some of the, uh, the coaches that are in the, with the smaller clubs that maybe don't have the, the talent pool. So they don't get noticed because they don't have the talent pool of like a Toronto or, or closer to the border. Well, uh, if you don't mind, I, I want to address the high performance for a second. Cause yeah, that yeah, sorry, yeah. into the coaching as, as you and I had talked just before Abdul got on was, we were mentioning Gord and the OGs, as I call them, mm. DeWitt and also Peter up north in Sudbury. I, as I was saying, we should be utilizing them with ourselves to elevate not only the coaches, but the athletes as well. And this would be perfect where they are mentoring us for the next stage and to elevate ourselves as well, because they are, have a wealth of knowledge you know, I tell you, I got chills when when Abdul talked about uh, getting all the OGs in the same. Well, this is it. Like, you what sit a there. resource that would be. It's a brilliant. You're right, it's a lot of talent. Oh gosh, I sat beside Peter Y, and I was just like blown away with just some of the things he was saying. You've got Peter Wiley that's still around, and and he comes out and helps out when he can. He is more than willing to help out in any way possible. You just have to make that call or email to them. And I'm sure that they would be willing if we would just be receptive to their education and understanding and, and what makes it successful for them that could help us. And I think that would be a great thing. The mentoring is even ideal. I have a mentor as an, an official. I went out and looked for my own mentors because I wanted to elevate myself so that I am not only just an okay official, I am a very good official. You know, I, I understand the rules. I understand certain situations, how to handle things. I, I keep within my mentor, I have three of them. And Paul is one of them. I have an international like Paul, yeah. as well, two of them. And they are on me every single day. And we go through the book every single day. We go through scenarios we watch live boxing that's going on anywhere in the world and we and I take from their information how to be and it's the same thing for coaching I have people that come and ask me questions about coaching and I show the younger ones that we have at our gym that want to be junior coaches and we teach them and we mentor them and that's how we keep coaches and keep them interested in the boxing so we've got three juniors right now that are under 17 learning about coaching and they're amazing to watch because they're learning and growing with what we're teaching them. Um, I have another one from Budo Canada that I helped, and he's now a level two coach. And I still mentor him to this day. And I follow up with him if there's any questions, things that he can learn. Even when he's doing a show and he's got boxers, I'm there. 
and I'm helping him at a distance. I won't sit in the corner unless he asks me to. But if there's something that I see that he needs help with, I'll give him a little guidance, you know, to help him succeed. As well, it's, a funny you, it's funny you talk about it like that. Your mentors, like they're on you all the time. Yeah. Because you certainly, I consider you my, my refereeing mentor for sure. Yeah. And you're on me all the time when we talk about it. <laughs> so I get yes. it. Yeah. And that's how we grow the sport stronger, you know, because Abdul, Abdul made a, an excellent point as well. We need to stop coming at each other. We need to start working together. I did and, mean to bring bring attention to that. That was a great point. No, you know, and I, I always say that I said this to one coach when winter comes and we all shut down and kind of hibernate that circle right there that you don't talk to. That's the circle that's going to help you keep your doors open. And if you are not willing to work together, you're going to drown. So let go of the ego and the attitudes and whatever. Find a medium, be professional and grow. This is about the sport. This is about the athlete. This is about your business at the end of the day. So, so further to that, I'm going to put it. I'm going to put it on the both of you. Actually, uh, a lot of fantastic ideas there. How do we translate the coaching development to coaching opportunities for people who haven't had them? Because as we know, when you apply for these, uh, I've been doing this for ten years now. I'm now a level three coach, and I don't get any opportunity. And it's not because I'm not applying. I've not been rel relatively recently, but. It's because you can't compete when you when you put on your resume, someone like I'm going to use Gord just because he's so decorated. If Gord wants, I'm like, well, I'm never getting it, and I I'm okay with that. That's he's certainly I'm I'm man enough to say I'm not the coach that he is. But are we able to make opportunities where we can have a mentor e position that's brought along? We're going to send Gord. We're going to send Sid. But we're also we're going to send Miriam from Perth Boxing or, you know, Kyle from 10-8 to the smaller clubs and go, right. you need a mentor. This We're going to give you this opportunity. You're going to be a number two under so-and-so so you can learn. And that way, later on, you're not in charge of it. You're not going to screw anything up. You're learning so that when it goes down the road, maybe we have an opportunity to take on these challenges ourselves. Most definitely. 100%. It's possible. Um, it's doable. I don't see why not. So cur currently, actually, it's great you brought that up, Coach Jay, because um, this was the exact scen scenario that we are doing when we're voting for who, who to choose between the coaches. Because this is obviously we choose the way the categor category is, um, how we're choosing right now, is have they had this opportunity or not? That's the first question that we're asking ourselves. Have we seen this person have this opportunity? Because we want to share it around. We don't want to just one person to hog all these opportunities, whether no matter if they're a coach, you know, sock or coach this or coach that yeah, of course. with a bunch of, which a bunch of these opportunities um, that we've seen them flourish and do really well. in, we want to pass it around. And, and that is the first thing that we're doing is has this person been in this shoes before? And if they haven't, then we want to send them with somebody who has to exactly mentor them. And that is, that's actually what we're doing. We have been doing from, you know, and also for the female coaches too, we're we're prioritizing on sending our females to give them more op opportunities as as newer coaches. That's um, good to hear. That's one of the first things that we're actually choosing when we're choosing which coaches to pick. That's and we also we also select it based on the tournament that we're going to. So if this tournament is an advancing tournament and there's a lot on the line, we want to make sure that somebody has a lot of experience. And of course, I'll give you uh, an example: is Daniel Khan. This person, have you have you seen him at provincials? He's running around left and right to each ring with his like 50 fighters from all provincials. He can handle pressure. He can handle sure. being disorganized and organized at the same time. Um, and that is somebody that I could say is um, we, we, we chose to send him to, um, I believe it was the Calgary, Calgary. tournament. Yeah. Um, and uh, there was a lot on the line there. So we chose him because he'd have to be a part of making it a group setting and, and, um, you know, taking care of fighters that he hasn't trained before uh, and who he did really well in. And, um, and yeah. And uh, to also mention on the, uh, just want to mention something that I was thinking about the other day when I was in Detroit. I don't know if you guys know Michael, Michael Moore. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He yep. was there coaching. So nice from a, from a fighting fan, you know, from mm. being a fighter, I used to be a fan of. You, you uh, mean the Michael Moore that I know, right? That like the 
professional, fantastic boxer yeah. of the nineties, Michael, Michael Moore. Moore. Yes, yes. He fought, Holy he fought everybody. Yeah, yeah. I, yes, he, he did. Casually, just chilling in the gym, coaching somebody, and I see him in the corner just going, "Get him, get him, get him, get him!" I'm like, "Yo, I, I seen this guy's face. He's a lot older now." I'm of like, course, Who is this guy. And I'm like, I look at him. I'm like, "You know, Michael Moore? Are you?" And he's like, "Yes, I am." I'm like, "Oh my god." Oh, uh, one more guy I got to be jealous of. <laughs> yeah, but it, but like in the gym in super bad boxing, there's around like ten coaches. They're all working together and they're all working on and focusing on different things. I don't see why boxing Ontario can't do that if we did have a camp, and you know having mentoring other coaches. You know if we have coaches teaching other coaches or teaching other fighters and, and they're having them shadow in in the end. I was just I was admiring him as a coach because now I see him as a from a fighter gone coach and I'm yeah. admiring him and how he's passing it, passing on the torch. Um, and, you know, at these camps, if we do decide to, to go with that, that'd be a great opportunity to give more, um, you know, uh, time for these coaches to, to showcase their talents and, and, and to I learn. That'd be right? fantastic to have. Yeah. That's something that a lot of coaches have been asking for and really are, you know, wanting more than anything else is that opportunity to ask questions, learn, but also grow from that. And how can they? No, and that's exactly true. Yeah. I like a lot of the stuff both of you brought up because I'm telling you from a, a small club point of view, and I hear it from the small clubs all the time, is the two biggest issues that we feel maybe don't get addressed as much. Because I mean, I'm not blaming anybody. I think that the, the boards have done a great job. Right. I think that we've got lots to build on. Right. But it's very easy to get into a status quo where all the same guys get the same opportunities because they're good at it. Mm -hmm. But we forget sometimes that if you're forgetting other coaches, you're also forgetting their athletes. You're also forgetting the region that they're in. So, I mean, we're not spreading boxing like we could be right. if we, if we had some new blood in there and taking those ideas that we had in the past, moving them forward and opening up new opportunities for coaches, which opens them up for athletes, which opens up whole new regions mm -hmm. of talent for, uh, for boxing Ontario. Well, can I just add to that? Because Abdul raises a good question, and so do you, Jay. It, and, and Abdul, correct me if I'm wrong, but when you started out, and both myself as well, you know, we, as a female, for myself, I always had pushbacks. But I was lucky in the sense that I had Preston Roberts, my coach, kind of guide me and train me. And then I had Gord Apolloni giving me some historical facts as well. Peter, so... And then I had other coaches kind of giving me, nip, you know, little tidbits of nitbits of their, their experience. And I took that information and started growing and developing as a coach. And you, you had, uh, you know, you know, Coach Boom. So for you, it was a big thing that you took that information and kind of developed what you have right now. And the new ones that are out there, they're, they're wanting to do that same thing. So when they do get that opportunity, like Daniel Kahn, you're, you're seeing them coming from this now to going, I can get there and I want more. I want to elevate. I want mm -hmm. to do more for the province, yeah. for the athletes, for the country. And that's us being able to give them that opportunity. And I commend you guys at the High Performance for even doing that because that's something that they've been dying to have for so long. You know? Yeah. yeah. No, I, I love that you mentioned that, Lee, because – when you think of Coach Jay, like, when you think of Daniel Kahn, like, I was actually getting at his family. I'm like, why aren't you guys applying? Like, why aren't you guys applying? Like, you guys because should be applying to these positions. Because made a good point. <laughs> right? I'm like, I'm you guys should be applying. If that's decorated, I won't have a chance. So they never thought that they would be yeah. even considered. So now exactly. with you guys at the high performance saying, hey, we want to take these minor, you know, I wouldn't call them minors, but um, I want to take these young coaches that need the experience bring them along as juniors and mentor them in giving them that opportunity. You've just created such an amazing experience for them that they want to grow from that and be more sure. and give more. So that's, I got to commend you guys for doing that. Awesome. That was and a great Coach job. Jay, Coach Jay, I want to add one thing for any of the coaches that are listening, please don't ever think, Oh, like I'm not decorated mm -hmm. enough. I don't have, we want newer coaches to apply. That's the whole point of the high performance for somebody that doesn't think they are good enough or apply. Cause that's the whole point of it is you never know when your hat gets chosen. I've seen um, the number of lists of coaches that apply 
you know, it's always different, but it's not a big list. And it's, and right. Same with the boxers for these opportunities. Apply because it's not that big of a list. Um, so apply. You, you never honestly know. And if, and if you don't get it the first time, just if you can make apply. it, apply again. And keep applying because yeah. you honestly never know once uh, your name gets called. And, and that could be a, the one time that, you know, showcases you in front of um, – in front of the teams and everyone has potential like we have so much talent in the sport especially in ontario locally um i want to i want to say a couple things before i head off uh so what i'm doing now with boxing um you know trying to organize the tournaments and 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 just give back the one the biggest thing that i have to for boxing ontario to give is my time and my passion um right now with wearing so many hats i feel like um you know, I'm willing to wear more for Boxing Ontario because I'm fueled by passion. Uh, if, even if it's learning about some new skill set um, or learning something new or, you know, you know, networking, I'm willing to do that with for Boxing Ontario. Uh, I would just like this- to interject there for one Go second, ahead. Abdul. For anybody who's listening to this, and I know I, you know, I, I don't have a, a close relationship with you, Abdul, but I, I yes. certainly always keep my eye on you because I get a great deal of respect for you. He absolutely is right in that in that way. Boxer, promoter. Uh, coach, your high performance committee. He's always been willing to take on multiple hats. So that's not him just saying words. That's something that I've witnessed myself. I'm sorry to interrupt there. Uh, oh, Abdul. I, I appreciate you for that. Um, so with, um, with wearing so many hats, you realize, you know, um, how much you have to be fueled by passion and I'm fully in, I'm very invested to be well-rounded and basically committed to each of these roles. It's not just, Oh, I'm wearing a hat and I'm just gonna give up on it. For me, for me, like to 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 wear one, it means I'm I'm willing to live by it and die by it, and that's how I, that's how I'm committed by doing this. And and signing up to be on this board means how much committed I am. Integrity is 100 percent on top of my list, and and putting these athletes, the youth first, is always going to be on my list, whether wearing having a title of being on the board or not. Um, now, with with that being said. What I'm currently doing is I'm trying to grow my house first, my the Boomers facility. And what I'm doing with that right now is what I've done. And to, just to tell you some of my recent achievements, um, I have it was able to re- receive um, our first grant. As I applied for the you know a city grant, something that I did on my own. I didn't know anything about grant writing. You don't need a license to do it. You just got to do a couple of Google researches maybe. And just, <laughs> you know, I've spoken to, to apply for my first grant. I've spoken to countless of grant writers and they all want a percentage and all and to their degree like they deserve it because they're the ones that are applying for it and then i just decided uh to un- attend a few courses on my own all for free and i ended up successfully applying the the city congratulated on me this they were very shocked of how well the the application was oh wow and uh we're able to benefit the gym is able to benefit off of that and the reason why i applied That's... for this grant is to target and focus on the youth within my local community whether it's being muslims being um black people or being you know people who are being targeted within my community and to provide to them uh free membership free boxing uh equipment just to kind of entice them to come in more right because yeah. once you hear boxing you think of oh money and and uh you want to i want to make sure it's very accessible to kids and that's what i'm again fueled by passion i want to be able to provide that to many, as many people as i can um, from the upbringing of Lawrence Boom, that's that's kind of what fuels me, right? So, um, on top of that, what I'd be willing to do is, um, other than learning new skill sets and and doing that, is working together with the current board to to listen to the current OGs that we have and to develop um, what works for the next Boxing Ontario's champions to, to develop what things that we can learn from the past, um, which there's a lot of success that we've had to learn from those and to go on to develop. Um, the most, the most important thing is feedback and being, you know, being able to communicate directly. You know, a lot of the stuff is happening right now that a lot of the coaches are not aware of what's happening. And, and I think a clear communication, a direct communication, um, between, you know, the board and the coaching members and the gym members and the fighters is 100% needed. Mm-hmm. Um, regardless of how some people may feel, I think that is something that is needed 100%. Um, is clear communication between the two parties. Yep. And feed, and the way we're going to 
go off of that is through feedback. We we, we need to we need to get um, the feedback so we can be transparent as an organization and realize right now we may be lacking in some in some areas. But I have not seen Boxing Ontario so active throughout the years that I've been fighting. There are every club show is every weekend and there's like three shows. We are very, we have a very active community with some of the best talents to offer in this country and not just active fighters, but also coaches. With, if we are able to work with what we have and let our egos outside the door and just try to focus on getting better, I believe that Boxing Ontario can only, can only go up from here. Um, and, uh, and yeah, the honest, honestly, I'm very happy to see the number of applicants. I wish nothing but the best for them. And for the people who are voting, if you haven't casted your vote, I'd appreciate if you voted for me and Lee for attending for this meeting with uh, Coach Jay. But um, yeah, I'm, if you have any other questions, I'm gonna I'm gonna head off and jo join my team and celebrate. Yeah, good, good. Go I appreciate it. your time. Thanks. I appreciate so your time. Thank you for taking time out of your day, there, Abdul. No problem. It was a, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much for hosting this, and uh, look forward to uh, see the success. I look forward to seeing you guys at the tournament at provincials as well. Okay. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye -bye. All right. Give me one second.